What's up guys, Cloudy here, checking in from the America server. And in this video we are gonna look at the new NPC hero, Talisha. So, we're gonna see you, how you get her, what she does, where she is good at, where she is not good at, and what kind of builds I think you can use for her. So as a starter, let's just get her. Um, we have a bunch of NPC stuff saved up, so let's use this. Present her with that. Yeah, you're very welcome. Okay, so let's get her new hero. Lol, that casual money throw, that's super OP. But okay. So she is a gemologist, so all her stuff is related to gems, not bad. Um, Alright, and this is her unique weapon. Increases own attack and normal skill attacks. Reduce target's attack and if the target is a boss, increase all damage it takes. So it's an M, but it's not or it's a regular ramp, so not that uh, interesting, I guess. But this should apply to everyone, so she can be a buffer, which is interesting. We will have to look at exactly what her stuff does. But first, let's uh, get her to Transcendence 5 and max her out. So we're gonna do that, and we're gonna cut to that in a second. So see you guys there once she's updated. So here we are. Um, I have gotten her to level 90. Max her skills, selected some perks, and while we enjoy some of Vespa's jiggle physics, um, the experience with her so far has been that the initial hype of PvP has died down when people found out that um, her S1 can be cleansed or, or removed anyway, so you don't get to see her in PvP that much. But in that first week when she was released, there were quite a few uh, maxed out Talishas running around already. I have seen one or two, but she wasn't really that much of a danger. Now for PvP, she's gonna be a little little bit more interesting because there have been some interesting results of that too. We'll just get to that and we just finished uh, purifying her so let's just see what her transcend animation is. So let's just do that. So basically I have seen two major uses for her in um, PvE. One was um, Trial of Sky where there was a video where like a zero star unique weapon Talisha without a soul weapon has cleared sky 7 I believe. Now the whole truth of the story is that that was with a very much real support team. There was a Krisha there pushing like 20 million DPS on her own which is a lot. Um, so don't expect to replicate that with, with a base um, Talisha if you do not have the supports. And the other option for her is probably Eclipse, which you will see once we go to the skill sets of her. Um, let's just do that real quick, see what kind of skills she has and why she would be good for Eclipse. Um, there have also been tests for like Valkazar and Xanadus, but apparently she doesn't hit all crystals nor all uh, caskets, so she doesn't work on those contents. But let's just see what she does. So basically she works like Juno, that her skill three, uh, 3 will transform her to a different form, so to say, and change her S1 and S2 skills. Let's see what they do. So. S1 skill deals damage and leaves a debuff on the target, which if you cast the skill again for in, within 7 seconds will do more damage and uh, there will be a part, uh, the second part of the da damage will ignore defense and there is a perk for this which will let you cast it 3 times for a longer cooldown. So you get to cast it first, then, then twice with the ignore defense mechanic added. If we check the other form of the skill, um, this one is also an AoE kind of spell, both of them hit kind of AoE with a stun attached and if the target is a boss there is again an ignore defense part and this also has a very interesting perk which we will check 
when we get there. Now the Splendor has two perks. The first part is like uh, AoE damage and mana recovery. Now what I have seen is that this doesn't really hit herself, which is kind of strange. She is not really in range for it, so it works more for your frontline and middle characters, but not really herself, which is uh, strange, she doesn't get any mana from it, but okay. And the other part of the skill is that uh, it does a heal, which is interesting, and reduces attacks of the enemies that were hit by it. This one, however, does seem to hit her too, so curious at that. Now, as mentioned, her um, S3 skill basically changes the forms uh, of, of her S1 and S2, and also either heals herself or regains her own mana. So this is also a nice second cooldown, very much sounds like Juno here. Also has a perk which will make her cleanse herself when she does this. And finally her other very interesting uh, skill is she gains every one second she gains attack 5400 and she gains uh, damage dealt to non-hero enemies by 1%. So after 30, this can stack up to 30 times and by that time she will have 30 times 5400 uh, attack, which is a lot. Like, <laughs> holy shit, that's 160k or so attack that she just gets after 30 seconds and also 30% uh, non-hero damage dealt. So that's pretty, pretty cool and we will see why for long fights she is actually pretty amazing, I think. Um, now that we have checked her skills, let's just check her transcendence perks. Because, of course, those are important. Now, I've already set a base template which I believe will work for her in Eclipse. Um, let's just select the last perk for it, which was this one. So when I will explain why I uh, why I chose the ones that I chose. Um, the final choice, I'm not really sure if she needs this. I might just go with either this one for attack and crit damage, or you can go with this one. But accuracy isn't really that interesting. Or, yeah, so there are some options. I will just click this one because I like this one, I think. So, uh, of course, attack and uh, monster hunting is kind of a given. Now, this one perk is something you don't usually choose, and this is my uh, setup for Eclipse. Um, but this gives her a lot of crit damage. It's still just half of what you would get from a love roulette max stack, but uh, Eclipse is usually very long unless you die early. So, this can give her a pretty, pretty pretty big crit damage boost, which is nice if you do not have a love rule for her. So I'm gonna actually test her in Eclipse and get back to, the, uh, to you about this. But yeah, I think this one will work for her. The other is also an Eclipse perk. At the beginning of each battle increases damage of her second version of her S1 by 20% and this takes up to maximum 20 times. So yeah, that's a 400% um, damage increase. Um, yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, I have seen someone run Talisha and they got past level 40, but that was a fairly well Talisha, so um, we'll see how exactly that works out. With, as you can see, I'm gonna run a very cheap version of her. Now, um, let's see what exactly the perks do anyway. So this other version uh, changes the cooldown of her uh, version 1 of her S1 to 25 seconds, but it will be only applied after 3 hits. So you can do her S1 ignore defense nuke twice in a row, but then you get a 25 second cooldown instead of a 17 second one. Now we would have to see how this works out with stuff like OD or Pris resetting this 25 second. Um, but as I said, she doesn't really work in the kind of content where you would usually use her like uh, Xanadu's or, or Welkazar, so... Um, but this is probably what enables her to clear uh, Trial of Sky, because she can deliver an instant nuke to all the totems, I suppose. Now, but this other one I think is, is really, really nice for Eclipse, so I'm gonna roll with that one. Now, this one, this is mana cost by one, this is for the mana recovery one, hmm, okay. And this one is like, af after two seconds of each battle, it creates the healing part of the spell for three seconds in front of herself. So, I'm not really sure where you would use this, maybe in some sort of auto battle where you want to have, where you have many stages and you want just some healing for a couple of seconds. I'm not really sure what the intent was with this spell. Maybe it's, it's a PvP thing, I don't know. Could be. 
but yeah, it's, uh, her PvP use is a bit limited, I think. Um, now this one is uh, upon every use of her skill, so her S, uh, every u skill use increases self's all defense by five percent, and this will go up to ten times. So hmm, okay, curious. Um, not sure I would actually choose this again. Defense is usually not needed, especially with Fallen Frey in the game. Uh, or the other Frey, or shields being as strong as they are. Now the other one, however, upon every skill use increases self-attack by 5%, this effect can be stacked up to maximum 10 times. So that's uh, a 50% attack boost on top of the 160k that she gets after 30 seconds. And we will see that there is more to that. Okay, and finally her S4 changes the activation interval to 0.5 seconds, so actually she can stack to 30 stacks within 15 seconds, which is interesting. Not sure if really needed unless you very very fast need that burst, but um, maybe in Sky Trial, but I don't see that really being needed. The other option is the effect becomes irremovable, so as we have learned this is actually, this also can be removed, but in PvE content, these spells aren't that common, at least not where you use archers, I think. From the top of my head, I can't really recall where I would use her, maybe on Shakmi, big Shakmi, perhaps, but eh, I don't know. Maybe there if you wanted to run her, but building an NPC hero just for that sounds like a bit overkill, I think. Okay, and then finally her T5 Dark, when there is only one enemy or more than five enemies, reduces mana cost of all skills by one. So this is made so that it works in single target content, but doesn't work in PvP, pretty sure that's why it says five enemies. Now Vespa often has a strange wording with these kind of skills, because they say more than five enemies, but it will usually work with five enemies. So if you have like the four totems and the one boss, then this should work. Um, I'm fairly sure it does. Haven't really tested, but I'm pretty sure it does, because Vespa always does this with their wording, and it's driving me crazy. But yeah, these are the skills. Now let's just quickly check how they actually look like when you use them. So let's go to skill info and see how it works. So let's just test all her skills. So we should see the stacking up a buff on her. And if we cast her S1, we will see that there is a buff appearing or a debuff appearing here. And if we cast it again before it expires, then we will get more damage. And this stays up, but of course we can't cast it again, so there is that. Now her S2, which is regenerating uh, mana for people, also these costs are super slow. Um, so you see that this is a fairly short area and targeted on, or, or like centered on the target, so it won't hit the back line, which is curious. And you can see that her, her S3, uh, or her S4 actually already, stacked up to max. Now if we switch forms, we have gained one stack of that attack buff and you, you can see that you actually need to keep switching forms for that to work. Now this is her other skill which is which has the damage increasing uh, perk. Um, looks interesting and it's curious that her auto attacks actually changed with her forms too. And then this is her healing spell. Yeah, so this one also hits herself and should hit your backline too. The mana game one doesn't, so it's like a little bit weird. But okay, that's what we got. And then if we switch forms again, you can see that this went up to uh, one more stack. So you, you need to keep switching forms to build up that stack. Um, yeah, interesting. So she can deliver some pretty fast uh, nukes if you can like, go do this twice, then you already had one skill that ignored defense, then you can uh, switch forms, and if you are fighting a boss like in Eclipse, then you could cast this, so essentially you cast three skills and two of them ignore the boss defense, and this one has also a quite nice increase in um, damage over time, but of course, um, um, yeah, you need the mana to cast those things, so yeah, she might be a little bit mana hungry, we'll see about that. But okay, let's check her gears after this. Now for a single target, of course, you would take the, the triple nuke or, or 
one skill and two nukes. For long fights I or long stage fights, I would probably pick up um, the S1 Dark perk for the increased damage on her on her red S1. Sorry, I'm really bad with names and I never remember. Oh yeah, also she has a Talisha's Blessing where the ruby cost of this central Orval dungeon is reduced. We can quickly check that out if I actually remember remember to be in Orval, so we can just go to the central neighborhood and this decreases it from 200 rubies to 140 for three hours. I'm still super mad at Vespa for doing this content. I think it's lame. They should never have done this. But yeah, so I don't think anyone will buy her just for this bonus. But if you wanted to use that feature, then maybe this is good for you. Now, okay, let's um, check um, her items because those are also quite interesting. As a starter, we should look at her unique weapon. So it increases her own attack by 12%, all skill, uh, normal and skill attacks reduce the target by 12%, and if the target is a boss, increases all damage it takes. So this means that um, she works, she, she decreases attack and she, incre she's a she increases the damage that the boss takes, which is pretty nice. And if you check what it does at 5 star, she gets a 30% attack buff, a 30% attack down debuff, and a 30% damage amplification, which is applied to all DPS. So she could be actually a buffer if you wanted to run her like that. You could pick the group penetration perk for that. Um, yeah, I also hear that this, this is actually dispellable from her, but that's kind of curious. But if you consider that she gets a lot of base attack, plus the S3 perk, plus this, she will have a hell lot of attack once she is built. Now let's just check her unique treasures. Um, let's go to archers, and this should be her S3 one. So reduces the cooldown of her uh, form changing spell uh, by two seconds, and skill dispels negative effects from herself upon use. So basically she can cleanse herself, and this is interesting that you can reduce it by 5 seconds, so it's like 4 seconds cooldown, I think it's 9 by default. That's kind of interesting, I'm not sure if you would use this other than PvP, if you wanted to like use it as a self-cleanse and then a nuke, but um, yeah, I'm not sure if she's really worth to build for PvP either. Now this one is uh, for her S2 perk, creates um, the splendor of Clematis around self for 5 seconds, so this is uh, the mana perk. And the other one, the red one, increases heal rate of, of allies within range by 20%. Now this is also curious because it could, if, she, if you were to use her as a support DPS in Eclipse, then this could help you offset the healing reduction maybe of the Eclipse stages. As you go to higher stages above 30, you will barely heal anything unless you have like counter buffs to that debuff. But again, I'm not really sure I would build for this. And starting this up only increases the healing rate in, uh, increase. Who knows? Maybe, but I don't think this is really, really good. Um, not really her best unique treasure. So let's see what else. Now this one, this one is her for her S1. And this is kind of curious because, okay, the, S, the the blue perk doesn't really do anything as you start it up. Uh, it just recovers 500 mana up on you, so that's half a, half a, a bar. Um, but the other one that reduces the cooldown of the, of the red spell of S1, which is which is ignoring them defense on bosses and has the. 400% uh, damage buff from S1 Dark. So that means that uh, if you have a 5 star unique treasure of this one, uh, you reduce the cooldown from 6 seconds to 3.5 seconds, which is almost as fast as Esker at maximum stacks. And Esker is one of the best Eclipse climbers. So this one is something I would consider. Uh, because otherwise the 6 seconds cost is a little bit slow, I think. Um, but if we check her final unique treasure, her S4 one, then we get to see why I think this one will be, in most cases, the best unique treasure for her, which is increases self-all defense by 1% per stack, so 
30% at maximum and changes the max number of stacks to 40 at the base. So we went from um, 30 stacks at 5k attack per stack and 1% uh, non-hero damage per stack to 40. And if you max this up, uh, max this out, sorry, then this goes to 55 stacks from 30. So almost doubles the stack number, which means that your 160k attack will go to somewhere around 300,000 after 55 seconds and you will get 55% non-hero damage. Of course, for this you need to have uh, um, a 5 star unique treasure on an NPC hero, of course, at least the unique treasures are not NPC limited, but still, um, yeah, that's a lot of investment, but still, um, 300k base attack, 55% uh, non-hero damage, 50% attack up from her S3 perk, another 30% from her unique weapon if you max her out, a built-in auto attack, built-in buff, a lot of crit damage that she can gain over time, uh, over time increase in, in, in skill damage and ignore that defense built into her. You can see why, why you get the feeling that she was built for Eclipse small cut here because I'm an idiot who can't find his own windows but here we go let's check her soul weapon activation requirement can be used after five uh, this uh, using the skill five times that's so weird okay so five skill uses okay skill description summons the soul which increases own crit damage by a hundred percent for 12 seconds Vespa has learned with soul weapons and they are now optimized for those 10 second burst windows which was which I am going to mention in an upcoming video and um, yeah afterwards attacks all enemies and deals magic damage if the target is a boss deals additional M magic damage that ignores defense now just for your information Seria gets this skill at A2 which she gets at uh, <laughs> A1 uh, or A0 sorry and her her buff uptime is optimized for actual um, burst windows so so much about balancing soul weapons thank you vespa so much but let's see advancement one increases magic damage uh, by uh, increases damage by 30 percent sorry and reduces the cooldown by four seconds so it does more damage and you get to use it uh, faster which is nice advancement two increases damage by 30 percent again and all damage the hit targets take by 35 percent for 15 seconds again a 15 seconds uptime buff they have learned that it's it's kind of a pain with soul weapons that they do not last long enough for the burst phase unless you cast it in bit in the middle of the burst phase which makes them a bit inconvenient to use in some cases so Vespa has learned about this but um, yeah which kind of begs the question what about the old soul weapons will you guys rebalance it or not but yeah that's not about Talisha so let's not talk about it Let's get back to her then. So I wanted to test her in Eclipse and replace my two-star Artemia with a class unique weapon Talisha just to see how far she gets in like a mediocre team. So this is definitely not my best built team. Um, so yeah, we are on stage 20 and now what happened here is really strange because Oddi reset, reset her skill and then somehow it went on cooldown again. Maybe because the Celica was using her S2 as well on auto and it somehow bugged out. There is a bug like this that happens with certain units. Could be that. I have run this since then again and it didn't happen then. Um, yeah, and you can, will see in a moment when I'm switching back to her blue form that it does something very strange with her blue S1 as well. But yeah, um, clearing stage 20 with like a very low investment character is not too bad. Um, for that she is quite useful and she did kill the boss really fast thanks to the ignore defense mechanic on bosses it's just that um, she's an NPC so kind of hard to invest in her but okay so we are switching to the blue form and you can see that it's on not on cooldown and I'm casting it and now it goes on the 17 second cooldown which is kind of strange not sure how it happened and now the leech beam comes and she dies so after the Eclipse run, I figured you guys would want to see what kind of gears I was using. As you can see, um, she is really low invested. A class unique weapon, a common treasure, and a zero star unique uh, or artifact uh, from this event. 
Um, she doesn't have any extra transcendence points, and I am using, well, sort of okay-ish gear. It's, it's like alright, not great, but you can see um, it's not even a maxed out the earring, for instance. And the supports were similar, not great artifacts, not the best supports I have. Still, she made it past level 20, so it seems that she can be a quote-unquote low investment, considering she's an NPC uh, Eclipse Runner. Um, so the final verdict on her, guys, in my opinion, she is a hard pass. And the reason for that is that she doesn't really have any kind of niche that she feels where she's really that much better than anyone else right now that you could build. And for an NPC status, that's kind of expensive. Um, her NPC buff is absolutely terrible. I do not think that content is good, I would not pay rubies for it and getting a bit of a bonus on how much rubies I need to pay for something that I do not want to pay for is just not making it work for me. So Miss Arara girl is, is a little bit of a miss for me. In PvP she can be used but again there is Yuria who does the same and does it probably better. Um, you can use her, her Sky Trial, but again, there are other units like Pensiron who can do that probably more easily. And then there are there is Eclipse, where she is good, don't get me wrong. For this kind of investment, clearing level uh, stage 20 is quite nice, and I have seen her run um, past level 40 or stage 40 when one of my Whale, uh, whale friends was running her. Um, so she has potential. But uh, the kind of investment it takes to run an NPC, I do not think it's worth it. If she was a normal hero, I would say build, just, just for Eclipse for instance. She can probably reach uh, stage 40 at a medium level of investment, but for an NPC that's uh, pretty expensive. So yeah, for me I think um, she's a miss. But let me know what you guys think, write it in the comments below also if you have any questions. And for now, this has been Cloudy. I'll see you in the next one. Hope this was helpful, helpful to you. Bye-bye.